acting. A game of chance, luck, and of being in the right place at the right time. For a small minority, it is a path that can lead to fame, fortune, and seemingly endless opportunity. For most working actors, however, they can spend decades plying their craft in the theatre, on film, or on television, without ever becoming well known. So what of these unsung heroes? This series draws attention to these jobbing, working actors who, by whatever circumstance, have remained relatively faceless behind their more famous counterparts, yet whose work is by no means any less important. Welcome to Unsung Heroes of Acting. I think you were laughing at me all the time. How much time have you been spending with that slag porter? You're on the manor all the time, picking up your pension. I think you're in with him. <laughs> well, that slag didn't send me one bleeding, miserable line or card all the time I've been away. Brutal, threatening, vulnerable, and sensitive. These are just some of the words used to describe Australian actor Kenneth J. Warren. In a career that was to last just over 20 years, he proved himself to be a more than reliable character actor, playing an impressive array of contrasting roles, ranging from crooks, monsters, psychopaths, to police officers and law-abiding citizens. Born in Parramatta in 1929, Kenneth John Rathbone Warren attended North Sydney Boys High School. He began acting around the age of 20, appearing in many stage productions with the New Theatre in Sydney and through the Elizabethan Theatre Trust. It was in the mid-1950s, in a landmark production of Ray Lawler's The Summer of the Seventeenth Doll, that saw Warren tour to London, where his performance as one of the cane cutters Rue was met with great acclaim. Extremely rare footage of this production shows him in full, threatening flight. So well received was his performance that Warren decided to take a risk and relocate to London. It proved to be the right decision, as almost immediately he became a fixture of British television and film from the late 1950s. Well, yes, that has been done. Well, first of all, the police have to disagree with the coroner's verdict. The acting style of the period was slowly moving away from the more traditional, presentational style of performing to a more instinctive, uncertain, urgent, method style of acting. A style which suited Warren perfectly. I need to come looking for this girl, huh? I, I, I jog your memory. I was sent from the hospital. Oh, you can do much better than that, Doctor. For instance, who were you telephoning? I was telephoning the police. They're on their way. Huh. Then you are going to have to help us, Doctor. He was a naturally instinctive performer who understood his relationship with the camera. You go to the Via Mattino, number 56. Nandina there runs an undercover joint for international guys on the run. His strong physical presence is complemented well by an inner intensity and threat which he conveys with skill through his eyes. It's a stillness that can speak volumes. This is something which you see time and again throughout Warren's work, even when playing more ordinary characters. He performed with economy and that he could be quiet and watchful if the role required it. His tough exterior betrayed a sensitivity. He possessed the actor's gift of listening, not just with his ears, but also with his eyes ensuring that his responses were intuitive and fresh. Hey, it's on order. It's all right. I don't care what you say. I don't think it's fair on old Arthur. I mean, he's going to stay here all night with that. Yeah, I usually take out what's in it about midnight. That doesn't make any difference. I wouldn't like his job at night. I know. But safe is coming. It'll be all right. You know the trouble with you is, Harry. What? You worry too much. <laughs> Although Warren had a knack for underplaying, he was also very capable of playing to the extreme. He gave some outrageously theatrical and comedic performances throughout his career, almost bordering on overplaying. 
but somehow managing to infuse these performances with a degree of believability. <laughs> Mr. Warlock, you're crazy. <laughs> you, please, don't use that word. He was not afraid to take risks as an actor. However cartoonish or monstrous the character, he somehow makes their behaviour still recognisably human. This trait is prevalent in one of his best remembered roles, that of Zizi von Schnurk, the European film director in the Avengers episode, Epic. I will make you famous, Mrs. Peel. I will make you a star, posthumously. The destruction of Mrs. Emma Peel, conceived by Z.C. von Schnerk, written by Z.C. von Schnerk, directed by Z.C. von Schnerk, a Z.C. von Schnerk production! This flair for comedy, for playing the ridiculous and the outrageous, was also used to great advantage in shows such as Up Pompeii. Don't point your finger at me, you scum! And Steptoe and Son, where he played a brash Australian claiming to be a long lost relative. To the Steptoe family, long may it be reunited! It's a caricatured performance, but somehow nuanced at just the right moments. It's worth noting too, that whilst Warren had a great ear for dialects and accents, he wasn't afraid at times to use his own Australian brogue. But I understand there's millions of DOS houses up around the Earl's Court, so I suppose I'll make my way up there. And... Although Warren's domain was mainly television, he did occasionally venture into the world of film and shared the screen with several well-known actors of the period. In High Wind in Jamaica, for example, he plays the beleaguered captain whose ship has been overtaken by Hollywood heavyweights, Anthony Quinn and James Coburn. All I need is some stores and some money. I, I have no money. No money? None. Here he gives a subtle performance, skillfully displaying fear and weakness of spirit simply through a look or a glance. In one of the last roles of his career, Warren gives an extraordinarily nuanced performance of threat and paranoia, playing a mobster who is only all too well aware of his own mortality. He underplays admirably throughout, sitting in stillness and allowing the atmosphere of menace to hold the scene without the need for much dialogue. Just don't get flesh, Bender. Don't take the mickey. What hard to do here. It is a tantalising and mature performance and gives an indication of where his work may have gone had he not passed away a year later of a heart attack at the young age of 43. Kenneth Warren was an immensely versatile and talented actor who more than held his own on screen. His impressive body of work in a relatively short career reveals an actor who wasn't afraid to take risks. He could be explosive, and over the top, but also subtle, nuanced, and truthful. An actor at the top of his craft, Kenneth J. Warren is deserving of wider recognition.